Hey, this is Mr. A, and I'd like to go over with you uh, the lab data and graph and analysis that you should have completed for one of our recent lab activities, the density of water lab activity. And if you remember, this was the activity where we uh, put water in a graduated cylinder and then put that on the triple beam balance and weighed it. Uh, after recording the volume of the water in the graduated cylinder and then we went and we put more water in the graduated cylinder and then we weighted, weighted again and, and we got a, uh, a set of data for the volume of water and the mass of the graduated cylinder plus the water. And we did that several times to collect data and then what I wanted you to do was to graph it. If you did not do this lab activity, that's okay. I want, you, but I want you to follow along because uh, the main point of this first segment of the video is to show you what my expectations are for when you uh, submit work uh, that includes a data table and a graph. So. In this document here, which I will uh, uh, attach to, um, if I post this, when I post the video, I'll attach this document to it. Basically, this first section of the document is a checklist for everything that I want to see for your data table. So if you could have a copy of this with you or have it um, on a screen while I go through, it would really help. But just real quick. You know, your data table, it needs to have variable names, units, precision, and a proper number of sig figs. Your graph needs to have a title. The, uh, the axes need to be uh, labeled correctly. You need to plot your points clearly, and you need to have a line of best fit, so on and so forth. So I will go through this with this data. This is actually some pretty good data, and I, it's funny because I found this um, this is my own handwriting, but the actual numbers I got from a piece of paper that was left on my classroom floor, and it turned out that the data was actually pretty good. All right, so when you write, when you make a, a data table, um, you, you need to have uh, at the headings your variable name. Now, mass is a variable and volume is a vari variable, so we have those names in the heading. You also need to include your, your unit. So this mass, we uh, the units for the mass is in grams. We use the triple beam balance, and that's what the triple beam balance was reporting. Likewise, when we're measuring the volume, the, the graduated cylinder was reporting its volume in milliliters. So I have that there. And I have the precision of each of these instruments. We know that the grad, that the uh, triple beam balance, the precision of that instrument is plus or minus 0 0.05 grams and the precision of this particular graduated cylinder that I was using was 0.5 milliliters. Its, its, grad, its smallest graduation was, was 1 milliliter, so its precision was 0.5. Recall that the, the graduated cylinder that you use may be different and you may be using a different scale. You may be using a quad beam balance and your precisions were different. It's up to you, the experimenter, to record those correctly and don't just copy what I have unless you in fact use the same instruments that I did. But you should have all this data on your um, recorded as you did your experiment. I'm also going to be looking that you have provided the proper number of significant figures. So if you are uh, recording mass on the triple beam balance, I'm looking for two digits to the right of the decimal for each and every one of your measurements. Likewise, for the volume, I'm looking for three significant figures in each of these, one digit to the right of the decimal. Okay. Uh, this, although this data looks, uh, is going to look a lot like the data and the graph that you're going to do for your project, uh, which is why I'm going through this, um, this is a little bit different in that uh, we actually have a, um, we're actually measuring 
the total mass of the graduated cylinder plus the water. That's what my little footnote is here. And that, that's going to um, be evident when we look at our graph. So now let's turn our attention to the graph. A good graph is going to have a title. It's going to have, in this case, you've got a y-axis and an x-axis, and those are labeled clearly. I'm going to be making sure, I'm going to be checking to make sure that you have these axes in the proper order. I want the mass on the y-axis and I want the volume on the x-axis. And this is because when we calculate our slope, it is mass divided by the volume, the rise over the run, so it does make a difference. When I look at your graph, I'm also going to be looking to see that you have uh, them labeled correctly. Here we see the variable name, volume, and the units. And here the variable is mass and grams. So the, the convention is to write the name of the variable and then to put the units in parentheses. I want to see major and minor tick marks, so my major tick marks are labeled and my minor tick marks are those marks that are in between for both the y and the x-axis. I want to see your plot points, which are these points that you've plotted here. They need to be marked, they need to be marked clearly. Here I've, I've marked my plot points with an x. I'll be checking to make sure that they are actually placed properly. So, for example, this, this high one up here is mass of 119 and a volume of 45. So, this tick mark is placed correctly. Then I'm going to be looking for your line of best fit. And this is really, really important because a line of best fit, it's a line that comes as close as possible to as many of your data points as possible. One thing I don't want to see, and a lot of students make this mistake um, early on, is it connecting the dots. So you draw a line segment here to here, and line segment here to here, line segment here to here. So it would be looking like a Z. That's not, that is not what a line of best fit is. A line of best fit is a line that comes as close as possible to as many of your data points as possible. And so you're going to likely have points that are above and below the line and you just you're you're going to try to eyeball this and get that line to to come as close as possible. I like to use a transparent ruler so I can actually see the the data points underneath my ruler. I've drawn a solid line between the measurements that I made and then a dashed line to where I've extrapolated here to the y intercept. Um, it's very important that you don't always assume that your line is going to go through zero. In this case, it did not. Now, uh, for the first project, your science skills uh, project, you're measuring the density and it will go down, but that's because you were measuring the mass of just your Play-Doh. In this case, we were measuring the mass of the graduated cylinder and the water, so when there was no water when there was no water in the graduated cylinder, there was still some mass associated with that graduated cylinder. In fact, by looking at the graph, it looks like it was about 72 grams. And that just, that makes sense. But anyway, this is what a good, this is what a good graph looks like.